Hey, welcome back. This is Nick from Income Digs, and we have another awesome video tutorial for you today. We're going to keep going with QuickBooks Online, and we're going to show you how you can manage your rental income and your tenants right through QuickBooks Online. All right, now, why I love to do this is because not only does QuickBooks have really nice looking system and really good email delivery, accepting payments online that are pretty cheap or free, um, but I also love to have everything in one place, meaning when I send invoices out and I get money back, it's all in my accounting books right away. There's no syncing that needs to be done. I can, of course, do some syncing after the fact or have it touch to Podio if I want to, which I do, but I want QuickBooks to be the single source of truth for my books. That's why I really love using it. All right, so we're going to dig into that today, uh, switching gears over to property management. So let's dive right in. You can see that on my dashboard here, I have absolutely nothing going on in my business yet. And that's because I don't have any profit or loss or revenue. I don't really have anything. We were talking um, during the last videos about setting up our cap improvements and everything. So just to give a reminder of that, where we're at on our balance sheet, if I pull up my balance sheet here, you can see I have some property, uh, 123 Main Street, I got 456 Maple. I've spent some money on capital improvements on all that stuff. Um, net income from last year shows up, but uh, I have nothing for this year. Okay, all right, so if I go to this year's balance sheet, pull that up, um, you can see my net income is nothing. There's nothing there. All right, and let's just go back to standard report just to drive the point home. My profit and loss for this year is completely blank. All right, so let's start operating this business. Assuming that we have some renters, some tenants in our units, let's send them invoices and collect some rent from them, okay? So the first thing I wanna show you is how you can customize the delivery of forms within QuickBooks, all right? So this is pertinent whether you're dealing with, um, you know, you're dealing with renters and tenants or you're dealing with clients if you're a contractor, okay? So you can do this by going, hitting the gear up top here and going to uh, custom form styles. And what this will show you is your list of custom forms. Now it'll give you your standard one, which you can edit. You can add many of these and then decide when to use them. So if I were to look at this, click edit, I've done a little bit of work on this so far. Basically you want to customize it by making sure that your logo is there, if you have one, changing your color template, and then deciding what shows up here. So here we have the design. You can change your template. There's a whole bunch that you can pick from. Okay, modern, fresh, bold, whatever. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Well, it might too. Uh, make the logo, so make sure to update your logo. Okay, small, medium, or large, and where it should go. All right, uh, splash some color. So I grabbed my Income Digs color. If you have a custom color, you can throw that in there. You can do a font, you can do all that stuff. All right, cool. Uh, what else is included in here? What content do you have? You can click the pencil and then edit what all shows up. All right, so. Um, I changed the name of, say, my invoice to rental invoice, okay? So that way um, it just comes through as rental invoice, one, two, three, four, five, right? Um, custom form numbers, what else is displayed, terms. There's no shipping that doesn't really need anything, you know? Um, I put in my email address, all of that. This customizes how your emails will look to your customers when they are sent out. I always like to attach the PDF. I always think that is a good practice. Um, your standard email template, what that would look like, etc. And then, of course, setting up your payments um, is important as well. And I'm going to show you a little bit how to do that. It's going to be kind of on your own, but I really like QuickBooks payments. The bank transfer is is free actually now. Credit cards does have a fee. All right, but set that up so that it looks good in that that's how your official invoice will be sent to your customers, okay? And go ahead and click done when you're done, save and exit. If I can get out of here. Okay, so we set up our form style, that's good. The next thing I would like us to do is go to our products and services. Now we've been here before for rehab expenses, all right, um, but Actually, one more thing I want to show you here is we can also customize, okay, okay, hold on one second here, 
Okay, we'll get into that in a little bit. I want to customize our customers, but uh, I'm not seeing it right here. Okay, so I'll show you that uh, at the end. Oh, here it is, customer label. All right, so if you would like to, you can even change your customer label to something like tenants. Okay, so that when you are working internally, you can see that they're called tenants. Okay, so um, I don't think I saved that, but anyways, let's go to products and services and let's make sure that we have some services for the rent. Now we have a bunch of these for construction costs. Let's have some for rent. So I already started creating some here for 123 Main Street Rent. Let's look at this. So this is a service I offer. I categorize it under rental income. I sell this service and I have it go into an income account called rental income. All right, now I do this at $850. The other thing that we might want to charge for is a security deposit, right? So let's add a security deposit. All right, so let's go with a new service. Let's call it 123 main security deposit. All right, category, I'm going to put it under rental income still. I know it's not income, but this is just a category to help us organize our list here. It has nothing to do with our chart of accounts yet. All right, I'm gonna leave class. Well, I could assign 123 Main Street as the class. This is also $185. Now this will not go to rental income. Why not? Because it should not be logged as revenue. This is actually gonna be logged as a liability. So I'm going to need to create a new one, 123 Main Street Security Deposits. It needs to be a new one. All right, I'm gonna click Add, and I'm gonna call this a Other Current Liabilities and I don't know if they have security deposits as, doesn't look like they have it as, a, as one that you can have, but it doesn't really matter. Um, we could just call it other current liabilities, security deposits, save and close, and then save and close. And so those are there and they're ready for us. Now you can do this from the invoice sheet as well. So don't worry if you haven't set this up yet. All right, so let's start working with these. All right, I wanna create a new invoice. Now I can do that in many different places. If I just go to all sales, it'll probably pop up that I haven't created an invoice yet. So I can click here to do that. I can also hit the plus button and go to create an invoice here. So let's do this, let's create an invoice. I also don't have any customers. So that's the other thing that I'm gonna to have to add here, right? So if you had any customers, they could show up here. Actually, I did add one uh, a bit ago, but let me, let me do a new one. So let's do um, this person, Wendell. So you can start adding them and then it'll bring up, we don't recognize it, so add it. So add this customer. You can do the quick add, but I certainly recommend that you put as much detail as possible. And if you're connecting with a service like Podio and we're zapping it over here, which we do in, with our Podio template, We'll automatically have all this in here so you don't have to really worry about it. But if you're doing it manually, you can just add the, um, their information. Give them an email address because we're going to want to deliver this invoice to their email. And actually, I'm going to do this one. All right. And save that customer. It'll pop up that email. Okay. Now, how do you want to accept payments? I almost always turn off cards for my um, customers because it has a fee associated with it, especially for rent. If I'm doing it for remodeling, that's a different story, all right? I uh, set your terms. I typically will do due on receipt because my rent, let's say this is for uh, March 1st, I want it due on that day. Now, I can always send it ahead of time, but they're going to see the invoice date and the due date. All right, service date will be March 1st. And product or service, let's do 123 Main Street rent, okay? And it will automatically populate the 1 times 850. All right, description, we can say monthly rent. And then let's say I'm also collecting on the same invoice, I'm collecting a security deposit. All right, so I can start typing 123 Main Street security deposit. Now notice that that pre-populated my class, which was nice. Um, I hadn't set this service to do that. So, okay, and this is security deposit. All right, so the total is 1700. So I can click save and send. And it's going to bring up the preview screen of how it's going to send to the customer. Invoice 1001 from Income Dix. Dear Wendell Johnson, here's your invoice. Here's what it looks like. We have bank transfers on there, but credit card is not. They can click the button to review and pay. 
right? Send and close. And so that was sent. So let's see how it looks to your customer. All right, so here's the invoice coming through to your customer. All right, so they're seeing your logo, they're seeing everything, it looks really nice, they can click the button to review and pay. And remember, we had that checkbox for the PDF, and here's what the PDF looks like, all right? And they can click review and pay, and they can enter their, their details and move through that payment, okay? And ignore the payment for now, let's go back to the sales transaction. And because we've now recorded this invoice, it will hit our books. Now we haven't received cash for it yet, so we wouldn't have it recorded anywhere if we're doing cash accounting, but on accrual, we would. What I love about QuickBooks is it's accounts receivable tracking. Okay, so right here we see that I have one open invoice that's not due yet. If the date on this invoice was, um, if the date on this invoice was say 2-1, it would show up in my past due, right? Now it's warning me that the customer is going to see that change, which is a nice warning because you see here we have uh, a record that Wendell already looked at it, all right? So now it shows up in my overdue bucket, which I love to see, okay? Who's overdue? And I can click here and I can send reminders. I can do that in batch as well, okay? So it's a really nice way to track and to manage your accounts overdue. Let's see how this reflects on our balance sheet and our income statement, really. Okay, so let's go to our reports. Let's go to our profit and loss. And let's do for this whole year to date. And you're going to see that the rental income is up to 850. Why didn't that 850 show up for the security deposit? It's because we told that product or service to go to a liability account. So it will show up instead on our balance sheet. I'm not sure why it defaults to last month, but I don't like it. I'm going to do this year to date. All right, so where does that show up here? If I look down and up, oh, that's last month. That's why it doesn't show up. Sorry about that. So let's do um, this year to date. And there it is right there, security deposit for $850. And then you can see my net income for $850. If I want to dig into this, I just click it and I can see that transaction was from that invoice and everything's right there. All right, I love using QuickBooks for managing this stuff. Every, everything's in one place. You can manage a ton of tenants, a lot of renters. Operationally for maintenance requests, things like that, it's not the system for it. it certainly is not, but I think it is the best financial uh, software for managing your books and, and managing your rental income. All right, so uh, many more to come on this piece of it, on managing your rental properties through QuickBooks. Let me know if you have any specific questions about this. Some of those, uh, those of you who've tried it and didn't really work out, let me know. And, um, you know, we can use that as a topic for the next videos. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks.